Hi everybody, welcome to Do You Believe Tonight on LiveSciFi.tv. I am your host Noreen and in the studio I have my great co-host Tim Wood. Hi Tim. Hello, thanks Noreen. Thank <laughs> thanks you. for joining me tonight. Thanks it's always a pleasure me. to Thank have you. you on the show. Thank you. Um, so tonight we got a great show but you know for those of you, you know, The Conjuring just came out last week, last Friday. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Conjuring, but we did a show, Live Sci-Fi, and I did a show, The Conjuring, the real story behind The Conjuring. And we interviewed Andrea Perone, who wrote the book, House of Darkness, House of Light. And the movie is based on the Perone family. So if you want to check out our videos, check out that. It was an awesome show that we did with Andrea Perone, the real story of The Conjuring. Now, next week, uh, oh, uh, this Saturday, we have another awesome show this Saturday. We're having two shows this week, so it'll be this Saturday, and Mark Hewitt is a returning guest. Now, Mark did a show with me, um, The Real Serial Killers, and the topic was The Zodiac Killer. And Mark is an expert on The Zodiac Killer, and he puts out a, a periodical a publication called Radians and Inches. So you might also want to check out that show we did. It was an awesome show. And then also tonight, following this show, Tim and I are going to be doing, and Margaret's going to join us, Tim and I are going to be doing an experiment, an ITC water reflection experiment. Now, uh, we will be explaining how this all works tonight on our show with Margaret Downey, and uh, I'm sure some of the viewers tonight know nothing about this. So why don't we ask Margaret what exactly, uh, you know... Uh, water reflection ITC is. Margaret, are you here? I'm here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for, for uh, joining us tonight. Um, just real quick, I'm having a little trouble with the feed, so if something comes up on the screen, let me know what the image is, and I'll catch up with you on that. Okay. Um, the, the method for ITC that I use is a combination of techniques, and it sort of was divinely inspired, I say. That it came to me in just like a thought ball or a flash one night to try a specific combination of techniques. I'd seen crystal photography and I'd seen video feedback loop and I'd seen nature photography. So I had the idea to combine the three together and see what I get. And I was shocked images were there. So now, Margaret, um, we're going to be showing some of your best um uh, water reflection images and uh, these are like these are faces from beyond now would you please tell the viewers a little bit about yourself Margaret sure I started doing electronic voice phenomena in 2005 I joined the American Association of Electronic Voice Phenomena and I got a good solid background in traditional EVP and then I branched off I started doing uh, experiments with foreign languages background sound and different things of that nature and then I branched off into ITC work and trying to get images. Now um, Tim is going to be showing an image mm -hmm. and I believe that first image is, image is Jeff Danner. Now also this image, wasn't this image on the Maury Povich show as well? Yes it was. I, I bet Jeff's mom, Terry, through the association, and one night when I was doing a session, I said, you know, Jeff, can you please send me an image that your mother would recognize as being you, and I got this image that you're going to see, and I sent it to Terry, and then Terry sent me the matching photograph to go with it. I was stunned. Now, Margaret, when you uh, do your ITC sessions, how do you pick your subjects? Do they come to you um, psychically or do you just pick them out of the air? You know, just, you just see somebody or find somebody that you, intrigues you and you try to communicate to them? Well, sometimes I make a specific request for a loved one or as you'll see later, I have asked for beings that were never incarnate on earth to show themselves. But in general, I, I do what I call an open invite for any loving, positive spirit who would like to interact to show themselves. 
Have you ever had something come through that uh, you didn't want to come through? I really haven't. I think that uh, intention and expectation plays a great role in my results. Mm -hmm. When you do your, when you're searching for these images, are you using a voice recorder at the same time to see if you can capture any uh, EVPs off of these pictures? I have audio on the video that I'm doing. So as I go back through, first I do a quick run through to check the audio to see if there's anything there. I haven't had good luck with receiving a corresponding EVP to the ITC image. Oh, you haven't really? No, I, th I, it seems that I'm basically getting, I'm either focused on an image or focused on getting voice. And whatever I'm focusing on, that's what I get. Mm -hmm. And do people come to you asking you if you can communicate with their loved one that has passed on? Yes, they do that. And a lot of times it just happens to be the total opposite. I get something and then later on I run into that person's loved one. Interesting. So now your, your uh, ITC, um, you've been in... Um, featured on A&E, and your videos were all on there as well, weren't they? Yes, I was so honored. I got to do two episodes of My Ghost Story in season two. I did episode three, and the segment was called Ghost in the Water, and I did episode nine, and I believe that segment was called Phantom Farewell. And, and, and this is just on your images that you've gathered so far. The first one was a mix of images and EVP, and the second one was just about audio. Now, uh, Margaret, how do you think these uh, these uh, spirits, what, how do you think they manifest in the water? I mean, what's your theory as to why you're getting these images? Boy, that is the million dollar question. I honestly have no idea except for it seems to me that maybe in the way they seem to be able to use the audio noise in order to formulate voice, mm -hmm. it seems they can also use the, the noise, for lack of a better term, of the a light moving across the top of the water to form an image. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, to the skeptics out there, um, how do you respond to uh, claims that people believe it could be matrixing? Oh, I definitely think that there are some instances where it could be matrixing because the human brain is programmed to recognize faces and images mm -hmm. from very vague things. But when you look at some of my images, I'm pretty sure that you know, many people would agree it goes far beyond anything that would be make matrixing or pareidolia. Have you ever tried any uh, facial recognition software? No, but two of my images were verified by a forensic lab, and that is the one that you're showing of Jeff Daner. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, uh, that'll be of my great great grandfather. Right. Okay, and I can pull that one up. Greater than ninety five percent match. Mm -hmm. And then also the one of the young child Jerome. Can you tell us about that picture then? Are you showing I'm Jerome? showing the one with the grandfather. Right oh, now. okay. Yeah. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about the grandfather one then? <clears throat> okay, it's, it's kind of a funny story on that one. I'd actually asked for my grandfather to come through. And in that session, I saw this bearded man and I, I kept thinking to myself, he looks familiar, he looks familiar. And then I, I got out some old family photos and realized he was my great, great grandfather. Now, how long does it take you to get this image? Well, I typically do about 30 seconds of video, and it can take two or three hours to go through that, depending which camera I've used, because there's somewhere between 15 to 30 frames per second. So I have to look at each frame individually because those images only show up in a single frame in the video. So you're using a video camera when you do this? I am. Um, some people do still photography, but I do a video camera. Oh, and then, um, so what, you want to talk about your next image? No, we already talked about Jeff Danner, right? 
Yes. Okay. And then uh, what about uh, Jerome, the little child? Well, Jerome was an interesting one. He just came through in a session, and I had no idea who he was. But I felt sure, just a gut instinct, that he belonged to someone and that I needed to find that person. So I put his image on my phone. And every time I had an opportunity to ask someone, I would pull out the image and say, do you recognize this child? Well, one day I went to a seminar in grief, and this is probably almost a year after I'd gotten the image. And while the mother was speaking, she was saying, even though my child was an adult, when he was in the accident that killed him, when I'm at his gravesite, I always think of him when he was a toddler. And this voice inside my head, you know, my mind's ear said, show her the picture. So at break time, I went up and showed her the picture. And she immediately said that was her son and that she had just been going through old photographs of him and had one that was an exact match for that image. Wow. Do you, I mean, do you think that, uh, I know that certain people out that do a lot of, you know, paranormal research, including myself, they feel that certain um, methods of uh, spirit communication that they do, um, they're best at. Do you think that water ITC is kind of like your calling? To do, or do you just feel that you know anyone can do it? Oh, I sort of think everything like water, ITC, EVP, uh, crystal photography. I think it's sort of like sports and music that nearly everyone can learn it and do it to some degree. Mm -hmm. But there are those that, for whatever reason, seem to be have a more innate ability. And so I think in that regard, I happen to be one of those, along with many others, who have that innate ability. But I truly believe that many, many people can do this if they have the interest and the time to put the effort mm -hmm. into it. And so this one day just came to you about trying to get images on the water. It did. I had tried uh, Klaus Schreiber's video feedback loop and not too much luck and I tried some still photography of the TV and not much luck and then all of a sudden I thought well what will happen if I try this combination and it worked. Now you also do crystal is that right crystal as well crystals? I do. And how, how do you do that? I like citrine quartz that have lots of I don't know what the little lines are called, a fissures or, you know, not super clear. They've got some cracklies in them. <laughs> and so I take the crystal and I put it, a solid background behind it. And then I will either hold it or set it on whatever the background is and take a snapshot with either my phone or my digital camera. And then I'll turn it and a lot like the water, I'll go back through and look at the screen on my computer when, when I've uploaded them and see if there's any images in there. Okay, so in, in, with the crystals then you use a still camera? I do use a still camera with the crystals. Okay. Um, any questions, Tim? I'm uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when you said you didn't have any luck with uh, electronic ITC, uh, so you were using a video feedback loop? Yes. Do you think it was to do with the people that you were trying to communicate with or do you just think that it, it just didn't work out for you? I, I think it's twofold. I think it may be some of the people that try to come through mm -hmm. and I think some of it's just that that particular method is not my forte because I know people that do that and get really good results so I just happen to not be one of them in regard to the video feedback loop. Right. Now, right. Mar Margaret, have you been able to recreate these images? Have you been able to, once you've contacted them, say maybe in a couple of months you try again and the image comes back? No, I've not gotten any repeat images. One of the uh, questions we have from the chat comes from um, Ali Mack. Uh, she asks, uh, have you ever tried using different types of water, such as holy water or... Um, I, you know, I don't know, muddy water, <laughs> I don't know, uh, to, to possibly get different types of images? Or, I mean, have you tried using different types of water? I've not tried different types of water, but I have tried, like one time I poured a can of Coca-Cola in there, one time I dropped ice cubes in, and one time 
don't do this. It just makes a mess. I poured oil into it. Hmm. Now, <laughs> that was no good. <laughs> so the way the ITCD work is, I mean, from what I know, is it's finding uh, or making communication through complete randomness. So are you, have you tried, I guess the process is, is when you use the water is you're using your finger, correct? Yes, I use typically my three middle fingers to, and I wiggle my fingers at the side of the pot. I try and keep them, you know, so they're not uh, in the frame too much. Mm -hmm. But I need to create movement so that the light moves across the top of the water. Have you tried using um, it like in just a stream? Or uh, like placing a pot like in stream water and just letting the water run over the pot. You mean like a faucet? Uh, yeah, yeah going like in into it. it or that's interesting. I've used my yeah. fish tank. I haven't sent you the picture that I have of my grandfather, but I did successfully get an image of my grandfather by video recording the top of my fish tank where the filter pours back into the top. So you did recreate that image. No, I got my great-great-grandfather before, and then I got my grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. Yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about that. So if you're using your... Okay, so tell the viewers how you do this, the steps that you do this. Okay, you know. typically what I do is I have a, a Corningware or a Visionware translucent pot, and I fill that about half with water, and then I put that pot inside a larger, empty black pot. And the reason I do that is because I want the light from the source above to shine all the way through the translucent pot to the base of the black pot to give the image more depth. And it also prevents um, the... Um, Artificial images that sometimes come through when using a silver pot because those silver pots can reflect everything that's in the room. Okay, and then and then you put and then you put the water in. The water goes yes. in the translucent, the top pot. Does it go in the top pot? Yes. Okay, and then you use your fingers. I use my fingers. I, I get the light source above, so. Um, either a hood light or my counter lighting. You can use sunlight. I have determined for myself that tube lighting works better than round lights and fluorescent lighting works better than halogen. Hmm. I don't know why that is. It's just something that I've observed. So then I take my camera and it can be an iPhone or a digital camera or anything that does video and I focus at about a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. I don't want to go straight into the pot I want to go in an angle and then I wiggle my fingers and I take video sometimes I do it on normal settings sometimes I put the setting on the camera on black and white or tungsten or sepia whatever kind of setting I'm in the mood for mm -hmm. you know and I just had a light shining on it over from the hood uh -huh. of the range and then I went straight I not quite straight in with my camera, and that was the first image I came up with. Yeah, I saw your Santa. Cat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and all, it was great. And yeah. that was my first image, and yeah. and now so all I did was snap snap that picture. It was no big deal. Yeah. But I showed it to the viewers uh, on um, on Facebook, and they saw all kinds of stuff that I hadn't seen before. We got like six, seven images out of that. Now, how many, I mean, okay, so you do these sessions, uh, Margaret. Uh, I know with video ITC, I like to keep my sessions if I'm recording video uh, between, you know, let's say, at the very max, five minutes. Uh, when you do these water ITC sessions and you're recording uh, video, uh, how, how long are you running these sessions for on video? Because for each, for, for the viewers that don't know, for every second of video, it's taking anywhere from 24 to 30, uh, 30 pictures a second. So um, how, how long are you running these sessions for? Exactly. I do about 30 seconds and a maximum of one minute because that takes hours to go through. So are you uh, calling out to whoever you're trying to communicate to uh, before you start recording? 
Yes and no. A lot of times I do a session when it seems like someone in spirit is telling me, go do a session right now. It almost reminds me of the scene in Ghost where Patrick Swayze stands outside the window and he's singing, I, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am to Whoopi until she pays attention. <laughs> right. That is what they will do to me when it's time for me to go do a session. So are you psychic? Do you have some kind of ability? I think of myself more as a conduit, and I do seem to pick up some kind of urgings from people, but I'm not a typical medium or a typical psychic. So, when you, uh, you've made contact with not only human spirits, but uh, animal spirits. I'm going to put up this uh, collage here, and to me it looks like a dog. Um, I'll put it up right now. It's uh, the picture name uh, is uh, let's see here. It's a yeah, kind of like a cool. brown looking dog. Um, let's see here. Let me uh, go to the picture here. It is uh, animals collage. Uh huh. Yeah. It looks kind of like a, a is it a dog or a horse or what what. How, was this taken through the water too, or? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, it's amazing that you can actually get, you know, when you do uh, video f uh, feedback um, IT, sometimes they'll get some color um, in the image, but this there seems to be a lot of texture uh, to the images, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think the texture is due to having the double layer of the pot, the translucent pot inside the black pot. Oh, really? Yeah, that is, that's the key to getting texture and depth in the images. Oh, so you can't use a single black pot? Well, you can. You can use any single source, a cup or anything, but the real key to getting the depth I've found is that double layering. Oh, okay, I didn't understand that. Hmm. Yeah, now to me I see this as like a, a horse in the lower right hand corner, a Shetland pony. Yeah. And then like a mouse or a deer or something in the upper left. And it sort of reminds me of a seal on the upper right. And the lower left, I don't know, a goat maybe. And, and, and why do you think that you're getting this? I mean, were you trying to, I don't think you were trying to communicate to a goat. But what? why, why, why do you think that, do you think like you're picking up visuals from um, another like parallel dimension i've thought many things i think um you know some of it's from the spirit realm some of it from a you know parallel dimension i've even had the thought that it may be my own projection of images mm -hmm. um and it may be in truth it's a combination of all these things that there's no one explanation for how these images form but i am incredibly uh, connected with animals. I have had two different mediums tell me that when I came in for a reading that I am completely surrounded by animals. Oh, really? So, Margaret, how, why do you think we get color on some of these images? Some of it would have to do with the setting or the camera used, and I do use an amber-colored translucent pot so it could be picking up a tad of the shade of brown in it. I've seen blue and red and... Yes, the blue would be because I had the camera set on tungsten. Hmm. Now, uh, the image we're looking at, um, we're looking at right now is, is a two, is a horse on the left and then uh, it looks like your ITC image is on the right. Uh, whose horse is this? That is also Terry Daner's horse. Of uh, That's Jeff's mom. And that little colt was born prematurely, and he was named Gigi after Jeff. And sadly, the colt was not able to uh, survive the premature birth. Hmm. So again, I had gotten that image of the horse and sent it to her, and she sent me the photo of the, the colt, which I didn't even know about. So that just randomly came up in one of your images? Yes, I think if I'm recalling correctly, I may have asked Jeff, who worked with animals, to send me images of any of the animals that are with him. Right. Did, uh, 
Now you're not all, okay. So not only are you communicating to animal spirits, but you also believe uh, you make contact with uh, extraterrestrials. I do, as far out as that sounds. No, it's, 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 I mean, we're on, you're on a paranormal show. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, uh, what made you uh, think that, or you know, what's happening here? I mean, why why do you think this is happening? Oh, um, just something that has interested me since I was a child. Uh, I have friends who are contactees, so it's something that I just believe in. And so on a whim in my sessions, I have sometimes asked for those who are not of Earth origins to show themselves. Interesting. So do you think Tim and I could contact a, a, you, uh, an alien? I do. I think our I attention <laughs> and our focus in our sessions is incredibly powerful in uh, assisting what comes through. Wow. Now, how do you know... Um, I know with EVPs and stuff like that, it's very hard to know, at least for me, uh, I always question who I'm actually communicating to. Now, when you do an ITC session and you think you're getting something that you think is uh, human uh, in nature, do you feel confident that what you are getting is what you think it is? Or do you ever question what you get might actually be something else? Mm, that, that is a good question. I. I'm pretty confident simply because of my uh, my own energy and my own what I think of as my spirit team that I trust. So I I don't feel like I'm an attractive target to be tinkered with by those that may be malicious or tricksters or those other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from chat? Uh, no, well, let's see here. We do have some, oh, we'll play some of the EVPs first, but if okay. anybody in chat uh, does have a question, just go ahead and type it. Uh, we will get to them uh, during the course of the show. Uh, but you, we have some EVPs uh, that, that you sent to us, uh, Margaret, and were these captured via a ghost box, some of these, or? Uh, only a couple of them were. Mm -hmm. I started doing manual radio sweep as a background sound, sort of like one would use a fan or running water. Before the ghost boxes existed, when I started doing it, the only thing that existed was a Frank's box. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted any kind of radio sweep, you had to turn the knob yourself. So that is what I experimented with. I know it's very controversial, but there's a few things that I look for in results. Uh, one, I want the response to be in a single tone of voice. I want the response to be longer than what it could be with the rate of speed that I'm turning the knob for it to have come from a single source. And very compelling is, is a relative or someone who says, I recognize that voice. That's my son or that's my dad or that's my life or whatever mm -hmm. cool well we're going to play uh the first one is granny um uh, got me is there do you have a story behind this one yes um this was a mother who was trying to make contact with her son and her mother had also crossed over and so she wanted to know if her son was with her mother so he's she asked him do you see granny and he immediately replied Granny got me. I have not altered that clip in any way. That is exactly how that clip came through. And how was it captured again? Sorry. This I was doing, uh, I believe that's the manual radio sweep. And then I record straight into my computer using the freeware program called Audacity. Anybody can download it. It works for Mac and PC. It saves you the trouble of having to transfer a file if you just record straight into the computer to begin with. Hmm. Cool. All right, we'll go ahead and play it right now for, uh, for the audience. You think Granny? Do you think Granny? Do you think Granny? Do you think Granny? Do you think Granny? 
Do you stink, Granny? Do you stink, Granny? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can definitely hear it. And I can hear the, uh, I don't know what kind of box it was, but it, you can definitely hear the, uh, the response come over the sweeps. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a Duracell uh, KP028. They used to sell them in twin packs at Costco. Has a little tiny knob on it, which makes it really easy for me to turn it back and forth. Now, uh, Mark, are you running these sessions um, before or after at the same time, or are you running like when you're doing your water ITC sessions? Well, I can't manually turn the knob on the radio and wiggle my fingers and hold a video camera all at the same time, so I'm typically doing one or the other. You can't? <laughs> I wish I could. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know if somebody was helping you out or, uh, no. you know, if you had somebody there with you. Um, so the next one we're going to play is uh, the Kindred Bark. What, what, what is the story uh, with this one? Okay, my dog Kindred crossed over and she has come through an ITC image, and also I hear EVP mentioning her name all the time. Hmm. And so I just happened to ask, could you have Kindred bark for me? And then I heard the man say Kindred, and then woof. Oh. Wow, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll play it right now so that they can hear. Okay. Can you have Kindred bark for me? 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 Now, uh... Margaret, you can definitely hear the audio, so. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely hear the uh, a voice say kindred and then you hear a bark. Now that voice that said kindred, is that something that comes up on your on your recordings a lot? Because uh, a lot of people that do uh, a lot of ghost box sessions uh, will say that they have um, almost like a guide spirit or something that r routinely uh, comes through on these uh recordings that will actually bring over whatever it is you're trying to communicate to. So does that voice routinely come in a lot? Yes, um, I, I'm familiar with what you're talking about. We've, uh, as the ghost box community has kind of coined the terms of like facilitator or guide or technician. And it's pretty interesting because I know dozens of people who, if they ask who's my technician or who's my facilitator, they will get a person or a couple people that seem to come through like they are assigned to them and they will be regulars in their sessions cool yeah that's that's pretty cool yeah we have a, a facilitator that comes in a lot too so it's kind of kind of interesting when we do the sessions uh the next one uh we're gonna play is that's is uh it's called uh, say hello to chris what what uh what, what's going on with this one okay this is my uh fellow researcher, uh, Deborah Caruso, and she crossed over, and we have a mutual friend named Christine, and so this particular one was captured from a mini box, and what you will hear is two things. The first one is her EVP voice saying, say hello to Christine, and then I immediately pasted in a real life physical example of her voice saying here's Christine so you can hear the similarity between her EVP voice and her physical voice now Margaret for the people that don't know out there what is a mini box uh, the mini box was an automated sweep unit created by uh, paranormal systems they are not selling units anymore and the main difference between that and all the radio shack hacks are the the hacked units do a linear sweep they either front to back or back to front on the band and that's it but the mini boxes had the capability of skipping around on the band so you didn't get the dwell time on the stations that you sometimes get with the hacked units now, Noreen has uh, a paranormal systems, uh, really old school. It's like the first uh, EMF detector they came out with. Oh, you mean that? Yeah, the big box. Oh. Yeah, I wonder if you still have it. But it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's, it's huge. Yeah, but uh, we'll go ahead and play the EVP right now. And, uh, here, yeah, 
some of those are just so clear. You know, it's amazing. It really is. Yeah. And I think that those who are skeptical or cautious of using automated radio sweep or manual radio sweep, or in fact, EVP maker with any kind of human voice, are right to be cautious because there can be false positives. But I also think there's a tremendous amount of uh, evidence suggesting that these are intelligent, actual, purposeful communication from those in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. The next, uh, the last one we'll play is uh, where, I think it's where people who die. Oh, where people who die. Yeah. Yeah, my voice is cut out on that, but sometimes I just ask who's speaking. Mm -hmm. And what, what are the responses you get most of the time? That they're they're dead people, or that, that you're, I mean, have you ever got responses from ETs? I have. And what type of messages do you get? Um, I've not gotten a whole lot, but I've I've got one from a female who said she was associated with the Andromedans, but not Andromedan herself, and the actual image of her was in the, the ET collage that you showed. She's in the upper left-hand corner. After I heard her speak in the EVP, I then asked, I picked up the crystal and I asked, could she please show me herself in the crystal? And she did. Now, have you ever got images, when you do water ITC, have, and, and you switched over to like crystal ITC, have you ever tried to duplicate the image that you would get on a water ITC session to that of a crystal session. Have you ever asked, when you captured this image, uh, have you ever asked for it to duplicate or replicate itself on another um, ITC device? Or Not the images specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose that's a good thing for me to try in the future. I do find though that for EVP, I can use different methods and get the same people. Okay. Yeah, I'm oh. just curious to see if... Uh, oh, there she is. She's in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah. yeah. And you have to kind of tilt your head to the right because <laughs> her chin is in the lower left corner and her head is in the upper right corner. So mm. she's sideways. So when you do EVPs, you do get some of the same people coming through? I get, yes, I get consistently... Uh, the same people in EVP, just not in the ITC images. Hmm. Perhaps we can try that tonight. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah. Cool. All right, so yeah. I'm going to play this uh, EVP here. Let's see if we're going to play it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are you working on right now, Margaret? What, what, what's, what's in your future? Um, my friend and I are working on a documentary and also a book, and that's just about it right now. That's a, a full plate for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Um, where do you see like your research going in the next uh, twenty years? My fantasy is that every home or every person that was interested in it could have a device like a DVD player, or a telephone, or whatever in their home that would allow them to communicate with uh, the other side. Now, um, there's a lot of people out there that um, say that ghost boxes are kind of like the new Ouija boards. Uh, do you think that there's any uh, credence to that? Uh, in, in what way? Well, in that, you know, you don't really know, um, you know, for, you know, a person who's not sensitive, if they were to pick up a ghost box and to call out to, uh, I don't know, anybody, and they get, some, they get somebody responding on the other side, or even water, water ITC, um, do you think that there's any dangers in um, doing this type of research? I think that people create their own reality and if someone is fear-based or um, has a fear, they will certainly get results that support their position. I also believe that there are bad things out there, uh, just like there are on Earth, 
And so I think that can happen too, but that we have an opportunity to sort of keep ourselves out of the bad neighborhoods, so to speak. Um, I, I'm glad there's people out there that specialize in dealing with these type of situations. I know people that do that. I have a tremendous amount of respect for them, but it's an area that I'm not real familiar with and I've not had any issues with it. So individuals are also coming to you for the EVP work as well as the visualization? Do you mean people in the physical? People, yes, human beings, people that are coming to you to try and communicate with a loved one? Yes. And, and yes, so I, I spent a lot of time uh, in the association where we as a group would uh, help each other, record, uh, try and uh, make contacts with loved ones. There was the big circle for many years, uh, which is kind of, um, I don't know, it's in a lull right now. But every other Thursday, a group of us all, all over the world would record at 8 p.m. our time oh, for five yeah. minutes. And then we would all post and share the results. And it was amazing how if someone wasn't able to record, that their loved one would go to another person in the group and leave a message. Oh. Now, do you think uh, collective consciousness uh, plays a... Uh, a greater... A, 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 you know, uh, when you're running a research ses session, if, if the group is collectively focused on uh, capturing uh, communication from a entity or a spirit, do you think that uh, it's easier to do so, or do you think individually? Ab absolutely. I really feel that <clears throat> both our individual energy and state of mind, as well as the group state of mind and focus, is very important. And in fact. If we get to be having too much fun and we're laughing and, you know, having a good time and not paying attention to what we're doing, we will actually hear in the messages something come through that says of the nature like focus or pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions from the chat is, uh, can you explain to our, um, our audience what uh, Crystal ITC is and how is that different than... Um, you know, do you still get the randomization of the images as you would with uh, water ITC? Or since the, the object is fixed, um, even though it's a crystal, do the conditions vary upon light? I think because of the stagnant nature of the crystal that there's not as much variety for the images. In other words, the, the coloration and the depth are much more similar with the crystal than they are with the water, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the images, since the, I mean, the crystal stagnant, it's not like water where it's moving around, but right. if you manipulate the light, you'll get the randomization, correct? In, in yes, the image. and I actually set the crystal still, and then maybe as I'm holding the camera, I will move slowly so that I'm moving the camera to a different angle as I'm taking the photos of the crystal. Now with crystal ITC, are you, are you, it would seem to me that if you were to put the light in the exact same spot, you wouldn't, would you still get the, would, I mean, you'd be, can you somewhat duplicate the images, I guess, that you're taking with the camera? If the camera is in a fixed position and the light is in a fixed position, if you move it from point A to point B, repetitively on the same track would you still get the randomization or would you be able to duplicate your your your, your findings the images that appear that i think are phenomenal the itc images themselves do not replicate mm -hmm. however the crystal itself you know i take many photos where there's there's nothing in it and if it's taken at the same angle it will just be the if I lined up three pictures, they would look like the same picture. But sometimes in one of them, there will be the ITC image. Now, how the ITC image appears and then disappears, I don't know. Have you ever tried to contact missing persons? Only via EVP. Okay. Now, why is that, Margaret? As opposed to trying to get an image? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. For, for me, working with the missing, it's, it's very emotional. 
you don't know if they're alive or if they're dead. So um, there was a group of us that were, was doing a project and we worked in a collaboration to try and gather information. Um, it's hard to walk away from it. And I ended up getting messages telling me from my own spirit team that I needed to stop. Really? Yes. Now, has anybody in that group, knowing that the missing person, or knowing that a person is dead and that they were murdered, possibly murdered, and asking for a water image of the killer? Wow, I don't know of anybody doing that. But that would, that would certainly be interesting. Now, that would be the case of a person in spirit being able to project an image of someone else rather than an image of themselves. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, it's we, intriguing. In, in the past, uh, about six years ago, Noreen and I did a, a Frank Spock session. We were actually using a uh, Frank Spock hooked into a spectrograph. And we tried to actually contact, I believe it was Kaylee Anthony. And uh, on the spectrograph, over you know, course of ten minutes, it started writing out. Uh, yeah, started spelling out words. It was pretty Interesting. amazing. Yeah, oh. it actually spelled out exactly where they found her body. Exactly. It, exactly. Yeah. And and so we, that night, Kaylee Anthony communicated with Tim, and she told us where she was, and so. And I told my sister the next day, and of course I was scared. We were scared to death to call the police. They said, call the police, let them know. I said, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. The, the, the uh, I guess the description of where they found her body Is matched it, up exactly with the words that it spelled out on the screen. Exa so in the, in the was, woods behind the grandparents' house. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly where they found her. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Now, one thing I learned in terms of police work is... When you call the police and you report any kind of ITC or you know EVP material, that that can actually become part of the case. And in the specific case that we were told about, we had information about a killer. And if that gets admitted and the information is wrong, then the defense can actually use that to set their guilty client free. Oh, really? So it's, a, it's dicey depending on the area of what you're working with. Now, that was a detective himself that told us that. Now, Mark, I have two more questions here uh, from our viewers. Uh, the first question is, um, have you ever captured an image of a recently deceased person? Uh, if so, what was the time? How long do you think it takes for someone to fully cross over and for them to project themselves and communicate with the researcher? I have not received an image that I'm aware of of a recently departed person. However, I have spoken via EVP with someone as recently as 12 hours and she was really in a state of confusion and in that recording her grandfather and actually my grandfather came through to say ask for her again tomorrow and the next day I asked for her and she was completely fine hmm. wow. so do you think when people die they're in a state of confusion I don't know that all people would be, but this particular person was. She was very young. She was just 25, and she suddenly dropped dead. Wow. So um, I think when we know that we're, we're going to cross, uh, when we have uh, preparation for it, I think maybe the circumstances are a little different. One time I asked, what's the first thing that happens when people cross over? Uh -huh. And the answer was, you find out what happened. <laughs> Oh, Margaret, where, where can people go to, uh, to learn more about you and uh, that we might not cover tonight and uh, get some more, um, some of your amazing captures? What is your website? Well, I have uh, itcdeadpeople.com. Love it. <laughs> and there's also evpsessions.com, which is the audio work. Mm-hmm. And I highly recommend people wanting to learn more about this to also visit the Association Trans Communication website. They have many pages with lots of information, and their address is A 
trans C, the letter C, dot org. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Margaret. Well, yeah, thank you. But you're going to be on yeah, in about a uh, half hour, right? Right. Yeah. So everybody, don't go away. We're going to be back in a half hour. Uh, Margaret's going to walk us through, and we're going to also do an experiment tonight to see if we can communicate with EVP as well as um, the water reflection image. Yeah, and if the audience wants to pick out one um, person or deceased person. For us person, to communicate. Yeah. No, wait, uh, Mark, before you go, Mark, I have one other question. Have you ever tried, you know, I was going to ask you this, and I forgot, people that are still alive, um, are they able, are certain people, have you ever tried um, contacting somebody who is all, who has not died, but is still alive? Have you ever tried to make contact with them or see if I've, you can get in? I have not done that, but I have fellow researchers who have successfully done that. So I don't know if the person is astral traveling and responding. I have also tried many times to reach my own etheric being, my, my uh, higher self. And to date, I've not gotten a response from myself, but that is something that I periodically try to do. Right, right. Okay, no, I just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I thought we had talked about that the other day, and I thought you said you did. To talk to people that are still alive. I, 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 that you had, uh, I think it, w it was regarding an image, and you did get a, um, a reflection image of somebody that was still alive. Um, I, I don't know on that one. The only thing that I can think of that I got that was still alive was my friend's dog. I got the spitting image of her dog, and the dog was still alive. Hmm, that's but interesting. For people, um, that's not ringing any bells. Okay. Yeah, do you think it's like possibly like a uh, doppelganger from like another bench? I don't know. Yeah, I was. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Paranormal. Yeah, 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 paranormal. Yeah, yeah, so. All right. Well, yeah, we'll be back. Okay. Uh, so everybody, yeah. please uh, give us a like and please subscribe. Uh, please come back in a half hour. Margaret's going to join us again and help us with our experiment. I'm so excited. I can't it's wait. It's going to be really a how-to, also. For, yeah. For everyone, right. so if anybody that's really you know anybody that's interested in the paranormal or you know wants to get, give it a shot at home, uh, now Margaret, what are the items they need if they're going to be doing this along with us? They can get any form of video camera, or if they want, they can use a still camera. iPhones work, Androids work, any any phone that has video capability that you can put into your computer so you can review it, and a, a container with water. I know that most people aren't going to have the translucent pot and the black pot set up, but you can use anything that will hold your water, even a, even a cup, if that's all you have. Cool. Hmm. All right. Okay. Well, give it a shot. Okay. Thanks, right. Margaret. Thanks so much for being on the show, and you'll be back with us. And everybody, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please don't forget to uh, subscribe, and please give us a like. Tim? Thank Thanks. you guys. Thanks. Thanks guys for all the interesting questions too. In the great chat. questions. Yeah, great questions. So, so we'll yeah, see you. Thank ya. you so much. Yeah, thank you, Margaret. It was oh, fun. We'll see you in about a half hour. Thanks, everyone. All thank right. you. Good night. Good night.